Are we live? We're live. All right, so good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you who get to play board games with us. This is our spotlight section, where we like to go over new and upcoming games to the industry, especially stuff live on Kickstarter now. And tonight, we're going to be doing uh, the Legend of Korra Pro Bending Arena. Super excited to be showing that off. But first off, who are we? I'm Matt. And Ian. And we are joined here today with some lovely gentlemen. Introduce yourselves, please. One of you first. I don't know. Which one? Oh, God. We're eating, so we're, we're polite, and we're waiting for the other one to go first. Aww, that's that is so exactly sweet. what just happened. Oh, my God, that's fantastic. <laughs> since you, you first, and since, you know. No, 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 Jesse, you first. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> They're so polite. What is this? I don't know. <laughs> this is exactly how it works. Anyway, um, you do that quite a bit, are you? Yeah, we do. Uh, I'm an inset. Uh, I'm one of the designers behind... The Legend of Korra, uh, Pro Bending Arena, and other games such as Acrid Fury, Bell 4, but wait, there's more, there's a big poster over there. All sorts of games, John Hurt, fun stuff. Yay! <laughs> and I am Jesse, I am the co designer on Legend of Korra, and uh, I will have a bunch of other really exciting games in the next couple of years. And this is Kita, she's my design partner. I was just about to ask who the special guest you have there is, Jesse. <laughs> so cute! All right, so we're. We are <laughs> super duper excited to be showing this game off. Uh, I'm a huge Avatar fan. I, I love the series, so I was jumping at the chance to show this one off. And was you know, I was a big Avatar fan, but uh, I, I didn't because Legend of Korra wasn't Avatar. I was hesitant to get into it, but I got into it so that I could get background for this game, and I'm so happy that I did, because I really love Legend of Korra on its own. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely holds on its own very well. Yep, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> good one, good one. <laughs> so, Anne, is there anything that you want to ask these gentlemen before we get into the uh, description of this game? Absolutely. Um, so you guys, uh, how did this come to being? Did you guys get the IP? And we're like, hey, that's really cool. We got this IP. We want to build a game around it. The pro bending is a part of the series. Um, or did you guys have a game already in place and then was like, hey, this IP would fit really nice with this, these mechanics? Okay, I have to stop you because the best thing that just happened is that your your glasses just became a green screen now. <laughs> <laughs> So there's like a hole in your face for a second. It was really, it was. It's really actually no, not that, green screen. No, that's, that's what there. happens. Yeah. That's what happens. That's what happens. Okay. Every once in a while, I have a thing. I have like. She's <coughs> not actually of this realm. She's from the spirit realm. I have fins so. on my face. Oh, she's from she's from the the upside down. I'm from the upside down. I got the spirit realm. Right. Cora, spirit realm. But you do look down? you do look like the demogorgon. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Anne. Oh. So cruel, so cruel. <laughs> um, so, anyway, back to Anne's wonderful question. Uh, we got the IP from IDW, uh, through Nickelodeon, of course. Uh, when we had submitted a whole bunch of other games, the minds at IDW, bright as they are, came together and said, Hey, that Jesse and Sen guy, those guys would be good for making this game. They actually asked us, you know, would you like to make a, a game in the world of, you know, Avatar? And we said, uh, yes, because <laughs> we both love the show. Um, and then later on it came up to be, oh, you know what, they, they really want a Korra game. Uh, and we said, sure, we love that show too. And then it eventually boiled down to, hey, they think that Pro Bending would be a good game to start off with. And we decided, we kind of said, okay, that's, that's what we're going to do then. Um, you know, our first inclination was not to do a pro bending game. That wasn't our hope and dream for the first entry into the world for board games. Okay. But it makes sense because it's a sport and there's rules for it already. So that kind of was a, a nice way to come into the world. I think it's accessible. There's uh, lots of characters and it's got a lot of people kind of pumped for that, you know, 1v1 you know, elimination stuff that you can't do in all games, right? So hopefully people will really latch onto that as a thing, like tournament style play. Um, and, you know, it's really quite aggressive playing, so like, like making it. Jesse, what are your thoughts on that evolution of the I mean, 
I mean, yeah, they, they went, hey, do you guys want to make a Legend of Korra game? And I said, what? <laughs> uh, and then I checked to see how much I'd been drinking. <laughs> it was, in fact, happening. Because uh, I'm a huge Legend of Korra fan, so it was like, I must be dreaming. And so, and then here we are. So we, and to, to more specifically answer your question, Anne, um, we designed this game from the ground up as a pro bending game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first concept we had, we, we put, uh, we drew out a pro bending arena with pen. We grabbed, uh, I think, I think I had a Settlers of Catan handy, so I scavenged <laughs> roads and a Settlers of Catan, some orb ones and some blue ones, and we started playing with them on our little paper drawn board, going like, how should this feel? What should it look like? And that's how, that's how this game started being made. How much of this was going back to the scenes in Legend of Korra and looking at how the trying to dig out as much detail as you can from the actual television show? A lot. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I watched the first six six or so episodes of Legend of Korra season one a lot in the last year. Uh, I mean, I, I get to say that that was research for designing the game, right? Yes. And I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> my, my Doing work! Research is really fun. Um, they like the show too, so... Um, we actually, one of the things we did do is we found this one animated GIF, or GIF, and... What? No, wait, stop. <laughs> stop right there. <laughs> Only heathens call it a peanut butter brand. And you wow. said, don't look like a heathen to me. Techni- I am not a heathen, but I also know that the person who invented No, it no, I don't it. care. He was wrong. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. I've heard this excuse. He was wrong. <laughs> It's not an excuse, it's a reason. <laughs> anyway, uh, the peanut butter, we put the peanut butter on the screen and we just let it play over and over again. And that really gave us a sense of what we wanted to do because it was a scene where um, everybody was defending each other and then attacking and knocking each other out of the way and jumping over stuff. And it was literally like three seconds of the pure concept of what pro bending should be about. And that's what we wanted to capture. We had come up with the system before we saw that animation. And obviously, we'd, we'd seen it in the show. We watched the show. We just haven't seen it on repeat continuously for 20 minutes. Yeah, and so when we did that, it was like, no, this is what we want to do. And so we actually took the system that we had, stripped it down again, and then rebuilt the engine to support an experience that was more like that. And that question that you asked earlier, Matt, when you said, hey, so how come you can't put, you know, tokens in your own space? Or how come you can't, um, you know, overload attack in one space? Um, Well, it's because of that. It's to promote the feeling of movement and um, the necessity to go wide as opposed to concentrate. Um, And you can also... Because you can never place a thing in your own vendor's spot, or that vendor can never bend backwards into their own spot, you have to defend each other. And so that experience was something we really wanted to translate onto the board, because when we watched the show, it became super apparent that that's the only way anybody ever survives and doesn't get knocked off the back is when somebody else defends for them so they can focus on attacking, right? So that's kind of the movement and the sensation that we wanted to bring to the table. <clears throat> Very okay. cool. All right, so is there anything else you wanted to ask before we get into the uh, the explanation of the rules for the game? Mm, no, I think that I think that we're good for right now. Okay, sounds good. <coughs> uh, quick note, I'm going to start a contest of who's going to win. Oh, so okay. they'll get to bet on that while you guys are explaining the rules. Oh, so you guys get to bet on the pro bending arena right now, then. Yes, yes. I feel like he's a bookie. <clears throat> Josh, no, never. All right, so Josh, if you could switch it over to the board cam, we could show off the pretty board for everyone here. Ta-da! And make sure that the, uh, the focus is adjusted on that properly. Uh, so we have the board here. This is our pro bending arena, and we've got our two sides here. So I'm going to be playing on the red side of the board. I am the uh, White Falls Wolf Bats, and Anne, you're yeah. playing on the blue side of the board here, and you are? I am the Fire Ferrets from Republic City. Boo. Damn. Boo. <laughs> All right, so we each have three characters on the board. They are representative of the three benders that you have. 
uh, for the pro bending game. One of the first things uh, that catches my eye in this game is that the miniatures for the teams are the characters. <clears throat> yeah. So it's not generic waterbender, it's Korra. So I thought that was really cool. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, one of the nice things too here is that each of the individual benders on the team, not just generic uh, bender cards, the uh, for each individual player they have specific move actions or attacks rather yeah. that you get to do, and we'll show those off in just a minute. Uh, but as you can see here, we have our earth benders in green, our fire benders in red, and our water benders in blue. Uh, this is the generic setup that's recommended for the first time that you play the game. So that's what we'll be using, and the objective of the game is to well, first, knock all of your opponent's players off of the bending arena. Off the back. Off the back, and then you win. Automatically. Just like that. Game over. Just, just like in the, the bending drink. arena. Uh, however, if everyone, uh, or if not everyone on a team is knocked off, it goes down to uh, whoever's got the most players left, correct? Or the most uh, benders left? Um, first tiebreaker is position. So, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so first so, tiebreaker. So whichever team is most advanced into the other team's side. So you we're going to be pushing into each other's territory the entire time and trying to basically push you off the edge. That's part of it as well. You off the edge. No, no, I'm pushing you off the edge. Mm -hmm. So good to go. Uh, and all of your moves are done by your uh, cards that you have here. And I'm going to not show off the green one first. <coughs> so we've got. Let me show off the basic moves. That makes more sense. So this is the one of the starting moves that we have here. And uh, this shows that the actions that you have to compete on your turn uh, for the individual bender. So the first action there, that's the movement action. So that's going to allow you to move one space. Uh, then the next one is one of the attack actions. Uh, you see the little uh, set of arrows there with the number in it. That is the, dis the range of the attack. So that means that that attack can attack <coughs> either one or two spaces away from you. And that's uh, spaces that share an edge or a corner. So, for example, in the middle of the board, these spaces are sharing a corner, so you can attack diagonally across those, but the ones back here do not share a corner, correct? All right, so uh, you proceed to do all of the actions in order there, and you have to do all the actions if you are able to. So if you have a movement there, you have to move if you can. Uh, so once you complete all the movements, you actually are going to have a hand of three cards in your hand at all or on your turn, and you have to play your entire hand. Mm -hmm. You do them in order. Uh, so when you place the, uh, when you do your attacks, you are placing the markers on the board. We don't have the specific tokens from the game, so we're gonna be using some generic tokens right now. Uh, but that's what that big one in the circle means. So that means that it's going to be placing one token within that space. Uh, now, a little contrary to that is one of Anne's cards here. Uh, the little that one has two, so you're going to be placing two tokens within the space. However, since it's got the jagged border, that means something special. We'll get to that in just a second. So if I have a marker on the board uh, in this space over here, and Anne wanted to uh, do some bending in that space with her earthbender, let's say, if it was an attack of one with a circular attack, it would effectively cancel out my attack before anything happens. That's called uh, total annihilation. Oh, but I couldn't... Uh, sorry, just a point of clarification. That was an earthbending in an earthbender spot, so I actually couldn't do that one. You cannot earthbend in your own spot. Yeah. That's what that would have been a legal move. Yeah. Uh, so then, however, the card with the jagged outline, as I was showing just before, uh, is a pierce attack, so that means you actually get to bypass the annihilation. So you get to place your attack there, regardless if mine's there or not. You don't have to cancel out first, so that's got its own accord there. So every team starts with six of the attack cards, uh, the basic attack cards in the main deck, and you draw your three cards to begin with. Now each team has this uh, team sheet here, so cute. and it's gonna show your cheat tracker, and that's going to go up as the game progresses. You're gonna gain one cheat at the beginning of every turn. Uh, whoever's first starts with two, whoever's second starts with three. So you get a little bit of a handicap there to help you out. And you're going to spend that sheet on your turn <coughs> to add more cards to your main deck from your strategy decks here. So you have uh, side strategy decks, which consist of four cards that are going to be placed on your sheet in one of these spots right here. 
So the point of that is that you can use your chi to essentially purchase more of those cards to add to your main deck to beef up your deck so you can do better attacks. Uh, you can't spend more chi than what you have, obviously. You can't go above eight chi. And when you add that to your deck, it goes on the top of your deck. You could only purchase the top card from the deck. What is that? I hear a dog. Oh, I think that's mine. <laughs> As long as someone didn't escape on our end. Um, so then, as we are progressing, we're going to go through our turns. If you end your, uh, end your action with your bender, uh, with your entire team, and there is still one of your opponent's uh, tokens on your spot, you are going to get affected by that. How you get affected is you essentially get knocked back a row. So your starting row is row, uh, zone A, zone B, Zone C. And you're actually going to resolve from Zone C up so it doesn't chain backwards on you. So once you get affected by one of these uh, attacks, you get knocked back a space and it gets resolved once there's no one on it. Pretty I like simple. How you moved your characters. I, you know, because this is the first time, it's the only time you're going to see it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in chat said that the dog is a polar bear dog. Oh, Just yeah. Polar outside. There you go. It's a polar bear dog. Um, then there's going to be other abilities that you see on some of these cards. For example, there is Block. So note that this is a green card for the Earthbenders. We are using a green screen to show it off, so it's kind of gray and translucent, but we promise that it's green. That. There you go. Uh, so for example, on this card here, you have a Block 2, so it, gets, it allows you to cancel out two of the ones that are on the same space as you. Uh, then you have a Movement, you have Block another two. Okay. Appropriately, this is named Stone Shield. Can't imagine why. <laughs> and then you have your uh, range 3 attack for 2, and that is a Pierce attack. Um, so again, that's one of the ones you're going to need to spend Chi in order to get. Uh, if you don't want to play a card from your hand, if you don't want to use the card in your hand, you can play it for Chi instead, and you'd up your Chi by 1 for every card that you do that way. So if you're kind of low on Chi, you can recover some in that aspect. Okay. Or if you don't particularly like what's on your card, I guess, too, right? Yeah. Uh, each team has a special ability that we'll get into once we use it. But So my team's special ability is Daze, and that's what this symbol is here. And your special ability is... I don't see it on one of your cards here. There it is. That is your counter bend, and that's on the bottom of that card there. So again, we'll get into that once we use them. While you have the card up, you may want to denote that the gold border. Ah, uh, yes. It's got a slight gold border to it, and this is the... Uh, oh, I forget. What's the name for this card again? Signature move. Signature move, right? Okay. Uh, that is the signature move for these characters, so it's basically the strongest move that each one of the benders is going to have. You note that this is a, has a 5 chi cost, so that's a little bit uh, stronger than most of the rest of them there. Um, and then finally, there are some cards, and let me see if I can find one here, that have a yellow fan on them. And that is basically, hold well, I'll find it in just a second. Yellow fan on it, it's in the top, and that is essentially a foul that you're going to commit. So it's not exactly a legal move. Yeah, that's why you've got it. Because you cheat. So what happens is, uh, when you have that card, you would roll the referee die. And that would essentially determine if the penalty gets enforced or not. Uh, the die wasn't sent to us. We do have a stack of six cards that are going to represent the, the die. So you draw one, white's good, yellow's bad. Is the referee blind? I mean... Uh-huh. He might need a little bit of corrective vision surgery there, but... Bats might have made some arrangements, but who knows, who knows? And then, uh, finally, Waterbenders have a little bit of a special uh, ability with some of their cards that allows their uh, attacks to basically spill over into adjacent uh, spaces. So for this one here, after they are done moving, they are going to do a range 2 attack for uh, Pierce 3, is a very strong card, but then... If Anne was to put, give me one of your purple tokens, unfortunately we don't have a blue one for you. Uh, if she was to attack this space here, she would put, oh, I can't see it now. If she was to attack this space here, <coughs> she would put three tokens in it, and then put one token adjacent to it in another space, and then one token adjacent to that one in another space. So basically it, it chains the attack, it is flooding into different spots. Very nice thematic. This one is Serpent's Breath. The other uh, waterbending name, which that helped me 
So again, three range for three damage of course. pierce. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. And uh, chain two, chain two. All right. So is there? And then there's the. I think that's all of the uh, uh, actions for the basic rule set. Am I correct, or am I missing anything there? I think that's it. Uh, I'm sorry. What was that? Did you get hold? I did not. Can you explain the hold mechanic, please? Some of the attacks have a hold modifier attached to them, so it's a, it's a little box with some feet in it, if uh, I recall correctly. That's that one there. <laughs> there is the hold icon right there. Um, so what that means is, after you do the attack, if you leave at least one token behind in that space so it doesn't get annihilated, you're going to put a hold token in that space for each foot icon that's showing there. And what hold tokens do is when a vendor is in a space with hold tokens, if they would use a move icon, instead of moving, you remove a hold token from their space. Ooh, okay. So that, that's a good one to have there, too. Chat is really curious if we could get an up-close shot of the minis, if we could throw one of those. One I of those certainly can. <laughs> How about we put the Cora one up there? That's not Cora. Oh, yeah, that's just kidding. I thought you grabbed yours. I didn't see you got big meaty hands. So this <laughs> this is the Cora one here. They got really nice detail to them. I'm really like excited about that. I wish that I was a better painter. I think that would look Maybe really. Maybe you can practice. That would look yeah. really cool painted up nicely. Do you guys have a link that uh, we can provide for any that are painted or? Yeah, we'll we'll shoot that to you. And Josh can throw that in the chat. And Josh, have you thrown the uh, the link to the Kickstarter? And as a reminder, this is live on Kickstarter now, so go check it out if you haven't done so already. And you guys funded very quickly. You're four times funded right now? Yeah. So that was very really cool. cool. All right. Uh, Jesse, did you explain days yet? Uh, days. I explained it. Days team is the, specific things when they hit them. Yeah, we're going to explain the team specific ones when we hit them. So we showed off the icons for them, but uh, we'll go over what exactly they do uh, when we use them for our characters there. And then, uh, oh yeah, one more thing. So when your, may, uh, when your deck runs out, when you uh, reshuffle your discard pile back together, you have to discard a card from it, correct? Uh, you cut out there for a second, Jesse. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. It's a new. It's, it's a new headset. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm learning how it works. Uh, when you when you reshuffle your discard pile, you may take one card from your discard pile and remove it from the game before you create your new deck. Oh, you may. Okay. So it's it's a way for you to thin your deck out and make it a little bit stronger. Or focus it, or get rid of cards from vendors who've been eliminated as your opponent's kicking your head. No. Ah. Uh. Uh, so another thing to note is uh, with the yellow fans, if you do get a yellow fan, you get a, a yellow fan token, the card. And basically what that's going to do is if you get two of them, you get disqualified from the game. Ooh, okay. Uh, you're looking at me explaining the rules, and I think that it's important that our viewers at home understand kind of like the dynamic going on here. Yeah. So when we, we do a lot of spotlight sessions, for those of you that are new to our channel, uh, we do them usually every Monday. And we do this as a way of showing off new or upcoming games <clears throat> like The Legend of Korra Pro Bending Arena. And the way we like to do this is one of our people will go through the rules before the stream. They will make sure that they understand the game to the best of their ability. And I kind of come on fresh faced I know absolutely nothing about this game. And what we're hoping that does for you guys as an audience is provides you some insight on to how easy this game is to pick up, explain to your friends that have never played the game, and delve in. So that's why Matt's kind of looking at me because I don't know this. I'm making sure she and, understands yes. it. It's kind of to help you see how easy it is to just pick up this game out of the box yeah, and run with it. Absolutely. And so speaking of getting on with it and running with it, I think we are ready to begin, unless there's any other points that uh, Sen, you or Jesse would like to add. <coughs> All good? Okay. So the, seems good so far. So we're going to take our six basic cards and shuffle them into a little mini deck, and that's going to be our main deck. And then we're going to take, according to the rules, this is for... We already have this done, yeah, you okay. and me. So, and then according to the rules, since this is our first time playing, it does allow you to kind of customize uh, your... Uh, strategy deck here, but for the first time it says take one of each card plus your signature move 
put them into little individual piles for each bender and put them at the bottom of your board. So you're going to have three piles of four cards each at the bottom of your character sheets here, uh, your team sheets, and that's going to allow you to uh, add more to your deck. So uh, just just to, to catch you off there, uh, you should put them beside the game board. Those slots on your character sheets are actually for the advanced mode of play where you play with tricks. Oh. Um, Josh was... It's really tempting to want to put those those uh, strategy decks there, though, because there's three slots yeah. and there's three decks. But no, that's for three other really cool things that you can get into once you come to grips with the basic game. All right, very cool. And I would, that is really cool, too, that there's kind of an advanced mode for the game as well. So once you pick it up, you can add a few more tricks and turns to it as well. Yeah. All right, so we have our... Uh, main deck set up. We have our three strategy decks set up here. And the rule for whoever goes first is whoever saw an episode of Avatar or Legend of Korra last. And, and since I think you conceded that you were catching up on Legend of Korra, yes. uh, that would be you first. So first off, you are going to set your uh, cheat tracker to two. And okay. I'm going to get three as the handicap for going second, essentially. So you draw three cards into your hand. And then you are going to resolve them card by card until you've played out all of your cards. In my choice of how, I, in well, my order. So first off, that you have your turn sequence here. This is a little printout of the rules I have. So keep focused, advance your chi marker by one. Is do that, you do th that on the first turn? Is that done on the first turn as well? Uh, Jesse <laughs> or Sen? To advance the chi marker? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so first turn, advance your chi marker by one. And then uh, uh, play technique cards from your hand, either for chi or for action. So again, you can play one from your hand and just get the act the uh, the chi marker from it. And then you're going to keep going doing that until you resolve all of the uh, technique cards from your hand. Okay, so I'm going to start off by playing. <clears throat> we kind of like to discuss strategy a bit so that it's more interesting for you guys at home instead of sitting here and watching my analysis paralysis. <laughs> and at this point in the game, I haven't, played, I haven't played the game. I'm not quite sure which kind of strategy is going to work. I'm hoping that Sen and Jesse help me, we, help me win and beat Matt. No. Yes. No. Uh, no one roots for the fire ferrets. So I have my starter deck and I kind of don't, I'm not quite sure if there's an it matters what order I play these cards in to start off with. So I'm just going to throw them down. Uh, I'm going to start off with Flash Flare with Mako. Mako? Mako. <laughs> like a shark. I can't reach that far. I got short little T-Rex arms. <sighs> so Hello. she's going to play Flash Flare there. So that is going to be first attack one for range one. So where are you going to put that first attack? Okay, then you get move one. But I don't want to move. You have to. No, 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 you have to. What? That's ridiculous. So she can move into a friendly space, though, correct? One that one of her characters is already on. If you so wanted to. <coughs> no. Okay, and then you have another attack one, range one. So you're going to drop that there. So that card is resolved. So I'll just leave that there, and you can give me your next one. Okay. Um, how do I use my one-two punch with my block if there's nothing to start off by blocking? It just doesn't do anything. So the block icon just removes opposing tokens from your space. If there's none there, there's nothing to defend against. Okay, that's cool. So then I'm going to do my ones there and my one here. Yep. Okay, that's yep. good. So you're not going to move any from that one. And then you've got high tide, which is your immediately move. I'm going to move here, and then I have a range of two spaces. Nope, range of one space. Ah, one space two. attack two. Uh, and I'm gonna. So keep in mind, these are stand-in tokens. These are not the official tokens for the game. We don't have those with us. So. Oh yeah, the cubes. Okay, so that's the end of your uh, play hard action. So then check hits. Uh, if any of your benders are in a space with your opponent's elemental tokens. That's not possible because you went first. Uh, and then stay sharp. You may spend your chi to add a new technique card to your from your strategy row to your main deck. Uh, so if you want, you can buy one of those cards if you have the chi for it. Well, and now, because I've started off with two, and the first thing that I needed to do was add a chi. Um, at three chi right now, I have the option to buy Rock Barrage for three or Spiral Flare Kick 
four three. And as a reminder, you could only buy the cards that are face up already. You can't delve further into your strategy deck there and uh, purchase one of the face down ones. I think that I'm going to purchase Rock Barrage. And that goes right on the top of your deck, of your main deck. And then you are going to then draw your new hand of three cards. If you had the chi, you could potentially keep buying cards, and you could flip that other one face up now. And that exposes Earthen Roots. All right, so that is the end of your turn. <coughs> it's my turn, so I'm going to increase my chi tracker by one because I'm going to keep focus. I'm in the zone. Um. Then I'm going to draw my three cards. And uh, let's see what I'm going to do here. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to play Rock Solid first. So Rock Solid is a block one, so I'm going to block that one for you. So get out of here, mm. meanie. And then I'm going to attack two for range two. So I'm going to drop these two here. And then that's the end of that move. Then I've got... Radiant Heat. So Radiant Heat is... First, I have to move one. So I'm going to jump backward a space here. Huh. Oh, hold on. No? Movement's always horizontal. Oh, okay. So I... Yeah, so you can't move forwards or back until you're actually pushed. Okay, that makes sense. So I'm going to jump there. I am... Actually, no, that's a lie. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to jump over here. And then I'm going to attack one range two. So that means that I could effectively use my attack to cancel out, annihilate this fire that's here. So I will get out. Yes, you can. And then I have another attack one range one. So I'm going to use that to put over here. Or attack one range two, rather. Ooh. And then that's the end of that. And then I've got, look at that, another radiant heat. Uh, so I'm going to move another one. I'm going to move over here now. And I'm going to do my first attack one range one. So I'm going to use my attack there to annihilate your attack. And then I've got another attack one range two. So I'm going to put that over here. And that will be the end of all of my attacks there. So I'm going to this card pile. Uh, check hits. I am not in any spaces with any of your tokens. So then I'm going to see if I want to purchase anything. And I do. I'm going to purchase Flash Flood. And that goes on the top of my deck there. And then I draw my three cards, and that's the end of my turn. I've got zero chi. It's on you, Ann. You've missed, you've missed one important step. Oh no, what did I miss? You need to take all of your opponent's tokens off the board. Oh, that is very important. <laughs> Go away, Ann. I was hoping they would stay there and you would run into them. Okay, go with me and go over turn order one more time. So turn order one more time. Keep focused. I get a chi. Play <laughs> hard. Now, wait, how many cards am I supposed to have drawn? Three cards. I drew too many. Okay. You cheater. I do. Uh, <coughs> so then you're going to resolve them one by <coughs> one in whatever order you so desire. Jeez, you're a pain in my butt. I know, right? Okay, I am going to start off with High Tide. So High Tide is move, and then you are going to attack two, range one. How would you I'm like to do this? I'm going to... Ooh, you're getting aggressive. Yeah, let's see if... Let's see if that... Let's see how that pans out for me. Uh, I'm going to... Do Flash Flare. Flash Flare, that is an attack one, range one. I'm going to attack here and annihilate this. That's not very nice. Go away. Then you have a movement. I'm going to move here. And then you have attack one, range one. I'm going to attack here. Okay. So that's the end of that attack. Then final attack. One, two, punch. So then you have... Block one. I don't have anything on my space, so that's fine. Attack one, range one. I'm going to annihilate this fire cube. Go away. And then attack one, range one. And I'm going to put one here. <clears throat> All right, so that's the end of your play hard. So now check hits. 
I am not on any spaces with any of your stupid little cubes. So this is where you remove all of my cubes from the board. Goodbye. <laughs> I, you know, the sound effects are good. Did you add to the game? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so now <laughs> and part of a wholesome strategy. Obviously, obviously, that's like when you push down the video game controller harder to make the go kart go faster. Oh yeah, that's that's how physics work. <laughs> oh, were you like? Turn yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obviously, it's how it works. So, and stay sharp. That means you can use your chi to uh, purchase cards if you can. No, I can't. Then that means you're going to draw up to three new cards. Okay, I only have one card in my main deck. So you can now shuffle your discard pile, but first off, you can discard one of those cards if you so desire to thin out your deck. Um, I'm not going to discard anything just yet. Okay, so shuffle them up. And Do I have then... to shuffle them in with the one card that's left in my main deck, or this card just goes on top? No. You draw the one card into your hand, and then you shuffle your discard to make your new hand. And draw two new cards. Okay. Um, I'm trying to need more announcer narration. That's Matt's job. Thanks. <laughs> we can. Oh, God. But I'm, I'm a player. Is that fair if I'm narrating my own? It's like the really conceited player. I'm sorry, did we not discuss <laughs> which character you are? So before, before Matt takes his turn, I just want to check to make sure that one other thing happened. Did you pick one of your strategy decks and flip one of those cards over on it? Did I... what? You, 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 you said, even though you didn't buy a card, you still have to draw one and flip it face up, and you'll cover one of the cards up. So each so should be below. The fit, your face of card should be below it, and then you're going to flip up another card and cover it. Should, okay, I'm not... Okay. This is my... Sh oh, God, I love having a camera. Okay, <laughs> that's my strategy deck currently, the one that I would decide to change. Okay, so you would then take a card from that deck, flip it over, and put it on top of Earth and Roots. Like that? Oh. Like that. Okay, so now you can only buy the one that's on top. Ooh. If you want the one that's on the bottom, you have to buy the one that's on top first, and then buy the one that's on the bottom. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I'm happy that you were here, because that's kind of, that's sounds more complicated than it actually is, but once you were able to yeah. walk me through it, that makes sense. Well, I feel good then. Yeah. I feel you're, useful. Is this where we say you're that's doing the, the angels' work? work? <laughs> I am doing the work of angels. There we go. So I've got a quick question for you here. If I've got a Pierce card, can I choose to still annihilate it with it or no? <coughs> no. Oh, okay. Oh, I love it when you make that noise when I'm playing it against you. Yeah, this is this is gonna be rough for me this then. It's gonna be so good. Okay, so sure, we'll do this. I'm going to do flash flood first. Could you not? Why not? <laughs> So I'm going to move one space first. It's a good space for you. Thank you. Uh, then I'm going to do an attack three of range two. So I'm going to put that... So one, two, I could technically attack this space, correct? So yes. So I'm going to yes. do an attack three there. <laughs> uh, then it's got that... What's, what's that ability called as it's going into multiple spaces? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do the follow-up on that, and that's going to put one cube here, and then one cube here. And then I'm going to move again, so I'm going to flip over whoosh, 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 over <laughs> to this spot there. Uh, then I'm going to do a river's edge. So I'm going to... Whoosh, 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 right, right over here again. So then I'm going to range three attack two. So I'm going to put that over here, and then uh, I'm going to do another river's edge. So my waterbender's having all the fun right now. So another uh, flippity flip over here, and that's going to be a, another range three attack Is two. He out of breath, he so didn't I'll do put that over the there. Cartwheel. He, yeah, he's a little tired <laughs> at this point. He's like, I'm done flipping. I'm done flipping. Uh, so I have one chi right now, so I can't buy anything else on my turn. So I am just going to, well, first I'm going to check hits. So these two, nothing happens. However, my, uh, my earthbender here is getting hit twice. Yes. 
So he's going back into the uh, the back row there. So close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can pick any of the spots in the back row to go into. I'll put him in the middle then. Isn't that nice? There you go. Any of those three spots all the way back there? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so then I am going to draw my one card, shuffle up the rest of my deck. And, and you're going to do the flippy flippy off. here. Yes, and I have to do the flippy flippy. So draw those. And let's see what I want to cover up here. I'm probably not going to buy that anytime soon. So I'll cover that one up with... Oh, look at that. I got a Mercury Rising there. So it's your turn now, Anne. Awesome. Keep focused. I'm going to get a Chi. So now I have two Chi. It is really temp. Never, I have an ADD moment. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to start by doing my one-two punch. One-two punch. So it's going to block one, then attack range one, and then attack range one. I can't stack them, right? No. No. If it was an attack two, you could put both of them there, but... I'm going to use my high tide. So that is your <coughs> movement of one. I'm going to join Bolin in this spot. And I have an attack in range one of two. I hope you guys explore. Actually, that's not one. Okay, there. Okay, and then finally. Going to use Rock Barrage. Rock Barrage. So that is range three, attack one, pierce one. Um, or pierce, rather. I'm going to use this space to annihilate the one blue token. You cannot do that with that attack. Because Why? Because it's pierce. Oh, because it's got the thing. Okay, that's fine. That's why I got hurt last time. Okay, I'm going to put that there. Then bullets. You can't do that either. Because I'm stacked. I can put it there. You've already got a token in that space. There is fine. Okay. Uh, Mock the brothers <laughs> are going to share a space. I'm going to. Can I put it in the same space that I'm in? No. No. I can't move back and I can't be horizontal. Well, that stinks. And if I have the brothers in the same space, this one attack gets applied one and one. Or there's yes. only. No, both can get one. Both of them did one. Yeah. Okay, this... You took your hand off it already. Listen, <laughs> I will fight you. So I see someone in chat asking, uh, did there, is there an order that you have to do things? So you do the order that's actually on the card there. So you're going to start top to bottom. And then you're going to resolve all three cards in your hand uh, in whatever order you so choose, but you have to follow that order of the actions on the card. How do you move forward from just, is that your, you can move? How do you get back into the, into the, the middle and the front levels? Yeah. How do you get back into the front? Go, send, send, send talking, but he's muted. Oh, yeah. uh, sorry. <laughs> if, you, if you knock all of the opposing team back so that there is an empty row between you, your whole team moves up to occupy that new empty row. So, but Matt is all the way in the back, way, way, way in the back over there. How, way in the back he Way is. in the back he is. How does he, can he advance to the second or third rows, or must he wait until the whole team advances into an empty space? He has to wait. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm stuck back there in zone C-ville. Okay, so then for me, strategy-wise, it take it makes more sense for... Bolin to get hit twice to go back into the third row rather than to have Mako and Bolin get hit once because then I'll have two players out of my first row. Sure. And then I'm going to... I mean, I don't know if that does make strategy sense. Just, no. you know, I, I, I said that I wouldn't help. But no, hey, don't help don't, her. Don't you be like this, Matt. This is some of the choices that we have here. If you carry on with your original plan and put Bolin in the same space as Mako, yet they will still both get knocked back, but they'll both only get knocked back one row. Whereas the position you're looking at now, Mako's going back one and Bolin's going back two. 
Oh, that's right, because I haven't annihilated this one, and I, my, I don't have... But I have range, too, and I still have three oh, more okay. attacks to go, so I was going oh. to annihilate this one. Right. Okay. That's it. Then, never mind. Sorry, I misunderstood the full scope of your plan. I, oh, it, it was in here, and it didn't come out my mouth. I thought sometimes they don't connect. One of the other things, I, though... I know next time to you know, let you finish off and, and see, see how it's actually going to pan out before making assumptions about where you're going. One thing to point out is the back row only has three spaces wide, so it's going to be easier for me to kind of target your characters back there, assuming that I have the range to hit them. Yeah. Whereas up here, you've got five spaces to bounce around between. So. Sprites and Dice had a very good question, but um, RTP has disappeared, but I did want to take my analysis paralysis moment to maybe re-ask Sprites and Dice's, Dice's lard the question. I would like to point out that TP's is Twitch proxy, so that's who's interpreting yes. chat for us. Sorry. We didn't run out of toilet paper. I mean, <laughs> we may have, but that's Matt's fault. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so I'm going to move Bolin over here. I'm going to use my range two to annihilate your stupid blue cube. That's not very nice. And then I'm going to use my other range two, and since I have these two spots, these three spots actually already with earth bending, I'm going to put it here just for good measure. Oh, oh. boy. Okay. Yeah. Super okay. Fun. So now I need to resolve my hits. Um, you can take these three stupid things and these two stupid so things. So those are spaces with no one in it, so <coughs> you don't get hit there, but you are getting hit there on I Bolin. I am. So you're going to jump back two, two spaces. Uh, then you are going to stay sharp, so you can use your cheat to buy stuff if you can. I cannot. I only have two. So then draw up the three cards, and that's the end of your turn. Awesome. Josh, did you want to ask... Flip over a card. Did you want to... Yes, flip over a card Wait. as well. Uh, did you want to ask Sprites a nice question? Um, uh, how random is dropping of elements into the other team's spaces? Is there a good mind game that goes into it? Anticipated or blocking moves, or does it come off being more chance with cards drawn and played? It comes off of chance from what I, like, just, you know, early interpretation here, because I drew three waterbender cards in a row, which I think is a little bit of an yeah. oddity, but I couldn't move my other characters off of the spots there, and since I had pierce on all of my attacks, I couldn't annihilate anything, so a little bit of a, a bad draw for me there, but... Uh, yeah, because the cards are pretty... I mean, until you start buying things off your strategy, you can focus on one deck or the other. And like Sen and Jesse were talking, when you go to discard, you may want to focus your <coughs> deck because if you've lost a player that it ha is associated with a particular element, um, the deck's pretty balanced. Mm -hmm. Especially because we're using a starter deck and we're not in the advanced version of the game where you can kind of deck build a little more. So... All right, so I am going to play... <coughs> well, I'm going to up my chi one first, because I'm, I'm focused. I'm going to keep focused. But I'm going to do rock solid now. So block one, but there's no one by me to block, because I'm all by my lonesome. But I am going to attack two for range two, so I'm going to use my attack two here to annihilate uh, two of your waterbender cubes there. So Sorry. get those out of there, Sorry. jerk. And that's going to be the end of it for my earthbender there. Uh, then next up, I am going to do Radiant Heat. So Radiant Heat, I am going to move one first. You should move to the other way. Move over here. I'm in the other direction. So I will annihilate this one cube over here. So you can take that over there. And then I'm actually going to use my attack to annihilate this cube over here too. So, so we had the question, what's Pierce do? Uh, Pierce allows you to forego annihilating. Well, it makes you forego annihilating cubes. You just put your cubes down. And each attack on a card has to go to a different zone. Um, you can't stack on top of cubes that you already placed of the same color. So Earthbender and Firebender could attack the same spot. Earthbender can't attack the same spot twice. With two separate attacks. But if you right. have a single attack which has two or three, points, or three points, they all go to the same spot. So that's, and Sen and Jesse, feel free to cut us off and answer our audience's questions whenever you see them. Right, but, yeah. Especially cut off questions, Matt. I like to think of it as a test for you guys, though, you know, so you can, you're making sure you know what you're doing. I'm going to have you answer them. I'm just going to ask them. It'll make me look real smart. So I'm going to move over here with River's Edge, and then I'm going to attack two for range three. So I'm going to put... What? Those two back here. Enjoy. You suck. <laughs> All right, and uh, then I'm going to check hits. There are no hits to be checked, so your cubes go bye-bye. Okay. Uh, 
Can I just ask strategy question? Why don't you do them on two different squares? You can. Oh, yeah, you can. Otherwise, I wouldn't. Yeah, that would have made sense. Can I attack behind me? Or do all of my attack... Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm okay with this. Uh, so then... You can totally attack behind you. I'm going to use my chi to, yeah, I'm going to buy headshot and put that on top of my deck here. So then I will reveal the next card from that stack, and my chi is down to zero. I'm going to draw my three cards. That's the end of my turn. So go ahead, eh? Okay. Uh, focus, my chi counter is going to go up from two to three. The light. Man, still can't. You guys make me nervous. You should be. Uh, and I'm going to attack. I'm going to start with my one-two punch. One-two punch. I'm going to so. defend with one. And then I can't really, I mean, I only have a range of one of my other two. It doesn't. Once that attack is uh, pierced, attack is placed on the game board. It can be blocked with a block with a shield, yes. So, yeah. Pier uh, Pierce just has to do with uh, the rules for placing the tokens. It doesn't have any lasting effects once they're on the table. This was not a legal move. Why? Those are not one space away from you. Because they don't share a corner with this space over here, you see? Thank you. They don't touch. All right. You, uh, you happy now? Yes, I am. Next. Uh, high tide? High tide. So you're going to move. Oh, did you think that was a range too? I did. I uh, saw it backwards. Yeah, looks like Bolin's gonna die. I he mean, he's gonna die. get he knocked falls into out. the water. Lava now. You are. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Why lava? You're the worst person ever. Oh man, I thought I had this good. So you're gonna move one. Okay, wait. All right, this this takes back what I want to do. No takesies yeah. backsies. That's exactly what's happening. I need the green one. You already played it though. No, I need it. And. So, uh, for Radobot, the answer to your question, is there a way for the characters that have been knocked back to get back up to the front? They can, if the front characters on the other team are knocked backwards, then everybody surges forward. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, if Matt knocked Ant's two characters back, two more spaces, if one's up in the front, then the Earth Bender would be on the same level as the other two Benders that she has. But Anna's really hoping that she knocks that waterbender and firebender back one space and then all of her characters would flow into the first row on Matt's side. Unfortunately, I think Bolin is going to fall off because there's no way that I can save him from the two attacks. So I'd like to discard my one-two punch. Right? Okay. How do I do this for Chi? Just use it for Chi. You don't okay. need anything else. So you put, put it in your discard pile. I'm going to use High Tide. So High uh, Tide? JS and MCC 92, that can't happen. What was the uh, the question there, Josh? Or what the if question both players is, were both stuck in zone three? Yeah, both players are stuck in zone three each. That will never happen. Uh, because when you get knocked back, you flow into the closest space. And I'm going to play Flash Flare. Oh, hold on. You did High Tide, so you moved and yeah. then you attacked one for two damage. Okay. Right so then next you're playing Flash Flare, so you're going to attack one range one. Then you're going to move and attack one range one. Don't break the mini. Okay. So that's the end of that turn. <coughs> you're going to check hits. Oh, no. You got hit. Uh, <coughs> no. Ah. <laughs> That's, that's, All right. It's great sound effects there. I need an elevator. All right, so Bolin is off the board. No, he stays in the water. No, he goes into the elevator. He swims. He's going to get pruny hands. Okay. <laughs> uh, so then you're going to use your chi if you want to uh, purchase new cards. So, hold on. To your deck. You missed something. Oh, I did? You guys missed something. What yeah. is this? Um, you get three chi immediately for oh. losing a vendor. So you up your chi by three? Yeah, and you see Bolin's strategy cards, those cards that you've been flipping over slowly looking for cool ones? Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Remove, remove that entire set of strategy cards from the game. Okay. 
However, your deck still will contain uh, Bolin's other cards. So this is when I start to focus my deck. Or you could use when it for When you're key. shuffling your deck, it's probably a really good idea to remove a Bolin card until they're all gone. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. It's all right. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Are you going to buy any cards? Uh, well, now I have seven chi, so I can all buy the <laughs> all the cards. Uh, I'm going to buy Firestorm. Oh, that's not your, <coughs> you know, your good card or anything. That is my signature move. You can tell because it has that nice little yellow border on the inside of the black border. Gold border. Yeah, gold. And cost five chi. Oh, yeah, that's a good way to tell, too. <laughs> uh, so you still have two chi left, but you can't buy anything else. Yep. So then you're going to draw up to your three-card three, hand, three card hand limit. So now I have two... I only have two cards in my main deck, so I'm going to draw those two cards, and now I'm in the shuffle phase, but this is my opportunity to discard... And I'm going to discard my rock barrage because I don't have Bolin anymore because Matt's a jerk. Thank you. All right, so uh, it's my turn. I'm going to keep focused. I up my chi by one, and I'm going to play all my cards individually here. So this is going to be interesting. Huh. So first, I'm going to play Headshot. So headshot is range two, attack three, and then stun. Stun would allow me to choose a bender in the space targeted by the attack uh, you just completed that is not already dazed. Place a dazed token on their status area of the team, and a dazed bender ignores the first attack or ability icon on their action bar that they perform. So basically, it would screw up the card that you're playing because it wouldn't do the first thing in it. However, I'm going to use this attack... I'm going to headshot my own space over here. Um, so I would annihilate this one cube. So that goes bye-bye. And then I put two more of the uh, waterbender cubes there. So I'm just going to try and catch up a couple of questions here. Sure. Um, Twitch username is asking how you got 7G in one turn. Uh, and the answer is because uh, she's been slowly gaining chi over the course of the game. And then when Bolin got knocked out, she got three chi immediately to compensate for the loss of a vendor. Yeah, so she she played and his one card for its chi value. She gained her the chi in the beginning of the, the turn, and then she gained three chi because I knocked out Bolin. Yeah, I hate you. So is that, yeah. here's your chi, my chi tracker here. I was at four, went to seven, and then I just bought a card. Uh, so the team five. ability is actually on the character board there. So she's got counter bend. That's its own ability. And when she gets to use that, I'm sure she'll give us a lovely explanation of it. Yeah, I'm going to. And then I'm going to make you go for a swim. Thanks. I appreciate you that. You need a bath. You smell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to play River's Edge. So then I'm going to... Over there. Uh, that's going to be attack two for range three. Uh, it's a pierce, but I'm not going to attack any pierce areas. So I'm going to attack over here. So that's um, one, two spaces away, but I'll, I'll keep it. Uh, then I'm going to do Flash Flood. So again, it's my waterbender going... I, my waterbender just likes to go by himself all the time. I don't know what it is. Oh, and it's you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to move again and do my, my lovely little backflip. Um, and that's going to be range two, attack three, and then it's going to uh, go flow into the other spaces there. So I'm going to attack three for over here. Then I'm going to put a cube over here. And then I'm going to put a cube over here. And then I get to move again. So I'm going to go <laughs> over here. <laughs> that was a little very dramatic. Appropriately very dramatic for one space. You know, it's what I do. It's good. Uh, so then I'm going to check hits. None of your hits are on my area, so those go away. So take those out of here. You might want to move your two cubes off of your space as well. No, those stay there. No, oh, okay. Good talk. Well, that's if you go to play something there, then you would have to annihilate them first unless you have pierce. What? Really? I thought all the things, like, it refreshes. No, just the opponents uh, refresh at the end of my turn. So that's a preemptive defense that I put there, essentially. You seem upset, Anne. Uh, then I'm going to... I can't spend my chi to gain anything, so I'm just going to draw up to three cards. I only have two, so I'm going to shuffle my deck and uh, draw one more card there, and then I get to flip over an additional one. Okay. 
So I'm going to flip over on top of this one here, let's say. So then I have Eye Blinder. Ooh, ooh, it's got a hold card. I'm excited to use that. <laughs> and then that's the end of my turn, so it's your turn. So okay. stay focused. Stay focused. I'm going to, I had seven. I bought my card for five. That put me at two. I'm now at three chi because I've gained an additional one for the stay focused. I am going to discard this card because it's a bowling card. Oh, One, man. two punch. I get an additional chi that moves me up to four. Oh, boy. That's okay because I am going to have... Mako take revenge for his brother. No. He is going to start off. Wait, let me think. Of this. <laughs> wait. 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 Oh, you know it doesn't even matter. Yeah, uh, we're gonna start off with flash flare. <laughs> so you're going to attack one range one. Range one. I'm going to attack here because you're a jerk. So then you're gonna move. And then I'm going. Jesus. I am going to. Wait, 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 wait. Let's see, what are you doing? Wait, okay, I'm gonna annihilate this. Nah, you don't wanna do that. Go away. Then you move. Then I move. Then you attack one again. Then I attack one again. So then your next card. You have attack three, range four. Wow, wow. <laughs> wow, this is, oh, oh no, my. things are gonna get serious. Wow. <laughs> Wowzers, okay. Attack two, range four. Oh, oh no. Oh boy. Attack one, range four. Attack one, range four. And then you get to do your counterbend. Okay, counterbend. First, any, uh, first target any space with your opponent's tokens matching the active bender's element and flip them to your side. Unfortunately, I had the, your opponent, my opponent, does not have any fire <coughs> tokens out on the board. Then you may move the stack one adjacent space from its original position following spread and token annihilation rules. So I don't, I can't use it That's right. because you haven't put anything down. But I'm happy with this little setup here. <laughs> well, considering my Earthbender is about to get <coughs> so, burned alive. So just so everybody understands what the Fire Ferret special icon does, uh, even though Anne didn't get a chance to use it this turn, it lets the Fire Ferrets take one incoming attack of that Bender's element, flip it to their side, and throw it right back in their opponent's face. I wish, was out. I wish that was an option. Okay, so that is the end of... Uh, so now I need to check to see if there are any of my opponent's tokens on any of my spaces. There are not. I used that to annihilate what was on there. I can remove all of my opponent's tokens, including the token that Matt has preemptively used to defend himself, and I didn't realize that we could do that because he's a jerk and didn't want to share that information. <laughs> and... <laughs> Then I get to, oh, I get to decide whether I want to spend my chi, and I do. I have four chi. I'm going to spend that to purchase Serpent's Breath. That's going to go on the top of my card. I'm going to draw three new cards for my new hand. Damn. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to increase my chi by one. Okay. Then I'm going to do Radiant Heat. So I'm going to move into this space over here. Yeah. I'm going to attack one over here, so that's going to annihilate that cube. Then I'm going to attack one again over there, and I'm going to annihilate that cube. Okay. And then that's the end of his turn. Uh, then I'm going to do rock solid, so I'm going to block one. <sighs> Damn. Uh, and then I'm going to attack two for range two, so I'm going to uh, annihilate one and then put my cube there. And then I'm going to do River's Edge. So I'm going to move one. So I'll move over here. And then I'm going to attack three, or attack, attack two, two, range three with Pierce. Uh, I don't really have any Pierce to worry about there. So I will I'm going to put those over here as a little bit of a defensive thing. And that's going to be the end of my turn there. 
so those go on my discard pile. I reveal a new card. I don't really care much for that one, so I'll put that on top. I like that one. Um, I am... Do I want to buy that? Yeah, I want to buy that. I'm going to buy this for two chi. So that's going to go on top of my deck. Draw three cards. End of my turn. Okay. I'm going to stay focused. I'm going to move my chi marker up from zero to one. I'm going to discard another one of Bolin's cards. Oh, look at that. It's like hampering your turn or something. I'm going to raise my chi marker up to two. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, it was at the end of my turn. I needed to remove all of your cubes from the board. No, you're supposed to leave them there. So now it's your turn. So they can attack you later. Okay. I am going to play high tide. All right. So high tide, you get to move and then attack one range, or attack two range one. Attack two, range one. Gosh, I hope you die. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to play Serpent's Breath. Serpent's Breath. Attack three, range three. One, two, three. Just die. Then you get to do another two in a space adjacent to that. One, two, three. And then you get to do two in a space adjacent to that. It's a good move. Trying hard to knock him off. So hard. And uh, that's the end of your turn there. You don't have any uh, of my icons <coughs> in your area, so those get discarded from the board. Your opponent tokens get discarded. I'm going to draw up to three cards. I only have two for my main deck, so... You don't want to buy any? Um, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll buy Liquid Lash. That's fine. So now I have three in my hand. Oh, look what that brings up. Okay. All right, so I am going to play... Oh, I up my chi by one. <coughs> i play Rock Solid. Block one. Yeah, block one. I feel like if you're spending the time to block it, that means that you feel like you're going to be able to save yourself. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to attack two, range two, so I'm going to put those over here, so those are going to cancel those two out. Yeah, those can go away. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put them over here. So then next, I'm going to do uh, Twin Streams. So Twin Streams, I'm going to attack two, Pierce two. So I'm going to put those two over here. And then I'm going to attack two, Range two. So I'm going to use that to annihilate this one and put a new one in its place. Uh, then finally, I'm going to Flash Flood. And just so everyone can see what I did there. Sorry about that. I forget that I cover up that. Uh, then Flash Flood, I'm going to move one. So I'll move over here. I'm going to attack three, range two with Pierce. Put that there. Then I will, nah, I'm gonna put that there. Then I'm gonna flood one over to here. Then I'm gonna flood one over to here. And then I'm going to move again. So I will move over here. And that will be the end of my turn. Uh, I can't purchase anything. So I reveal a new card on top. So we got a question in the chat, since I feel like I should do something. <laughs> uh, oh, come on, Sam. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Bandage asked if range can be either forward or backwards. And range, of course, is just the number of spaces away that you can target. So they can be in any direction you want, as long as you can make the distance. Uh, look at Sam in chat. <laughs> <laughs> in your face. <laughs> Best feeling ever. Okay, I'm going to start off by playing... Did you get your chi? Oh, no. Um, so my chi marker goes from one to two. I explain hold again. Uh, hold is uh, you're going to place... If you wind up... One of your cubes winds up into the space of one of my people. Okay. Uh, you're going to put a hold marker there as well. And the hold marker basically means it's going to take one of my movement actions to negate the effects of hold before I can actually move out of that space. Okay. <laughs> so if I had an if I had a card with one movement on it, I wouldn't be able to move uh, this character. I would just get rid of this. Okay. Uh, Matt, can you just scoop the board a little over to Anne? And then if you could put just your decks, how you have them laid out in front of you. Like here? Yeah, they just kind of want to see it a little bit, so we can maybe. Okay. You could probably use this water space, too. Uh, it's a little... I'm seeing it backwards, because I so I think this empty space is here. So. It's a little difficult to reach into that <coughs> section over there. But I've, I've got the three decks lined up over here. Then I can... 
All right, so, and it is your turn now, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's not really useful. Your character's about to get pushed back there anyway, so. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, Twitch username is asking about how hold works. So hold puts a token in a vendor space, and just like you you said, if they move, if that vendor would move, instead the hold token gets taken away, and they stay right where they are. So it's really good if you pile up, you know, 10, 20, 30 tokens on someone, they could sidestep and just get out of it. So you just pile a bunch of hold tokens in there to make sure they're stuck. <coughs> so to exemplify that hold token... I thought you didn't use any makeup today, Anne, because you have liquid lash. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> you make yourself giggle. That's the best part of it. So, Liquid Lash. That's a, a block one initially. So, go away. Then you have Attack 2, Range 2. And then that is going to put a hold token on me. If you want. Right? Yeah, only if I want. Okay, yeah, that's your, your cube there. So, I've got a hold token on my character there. Okay. So, then next up you have... High Tide. High Tide is going to move and then Attack 1, or Attack 2, Range 1. Wrong character. Oh, that's right. Um, wait. Your firebender doesn't bend water. Your waterbender does bend fire, though. Wait. But not legally. <laughs> you have Korra. How do I want to do this? How do you want to do this? How do I want to do this? You're doing high tide. You're moving right now. Moving. Hey, Jesse, what team do you like to play? <clears throat> My range is only one. Uh, oh, well, I mean... My favorite team is the Rabaroos as a full complete team, but I do quite enjoy the team that I've prepared for our showdown, so we'll just have to see how that goes. Give me that back. I gotta think. Answer chat questions. Uh, some holds are illegal, though, and with the ref system, if your vendor gets caught, they receive a warning or even an ejection. Yeah, that's. And it's right. two, two warnings is an ejection. Yeah, for that vendor, just the vendor that got the second warning gets ejected. I don't have enough range. This is gonna be poopy. Uh, so chat's asking if there's a mechanic where Korra can cheat by bending other elements besides water. <laughs> <coughs> there should be. Well, there is in the advanced rules kind of a, uh, a cheat deck. Right, gentlemen? Sense, sense talking yeah. a whole bunch. I, 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 I saw his mouth moving. <laughs> it's really entertaining. Guys, keep asking questions for Sen to answer. <laughs> okay, so I have decided to change my strategy. I'm not giving you the whole token. That's oh, it's piercing damage. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I can't use it to annihilate. Yeah. It's piercing. All right, this is gonna suck again. Okay. You suck again. All right, I hate you. Um, I'm going to use... <sighs> I mean, I'm on the edge of my sheet. I'm going to use Flash Flare. Flash Flare. So, range one, attack one. Whatever will you do, Anne? Whatever will you do? Nothing. Then you move, and then range one, attack one. I'm going to... I don't, I don't even know if this is, this is so awful. Okay. Um, Why, Anne? What's wrong? I'm going to use that to annihilate one. Okay. And then you're going to play. What are you playing? High tide. Oh, so you have to move. I hate you. Oh, look at that. You sure you don't want to move into this one? I don't like Here. you. You know, you don't have to play every card, right? Oh! You can discard them to get cheap. God, That's right. Works. I forgot about that. Yes! <laughs> so good! Sorry, Matt. I just, I couldn't, Three. I couldn't let her... Jesse! High five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Go fire ferrets! Oh, I'm so excited. Pop it? That would have been, uh, yeah, that would have been pretty bad for you. That would have been really bad for me. I would have been very upset. Okay, so, so now my chi is at, at four. I'm talking to my mic again. <laughs> my head. So, Jesse, Radbot42 is asking, you know, is there any mechanical difference between fire, water, and earth? And there is not in the tokens. So, the tokens don't annihilate each other better or worse. But each bender type, each elemental type, has a different flair to it. So earth elemental benders are better at defense. Water elemental benders are good at defense and movement, but not as good at defense as a water bender. Or sorry, an earth bender, and not as good at movement as a fire bender. And then fire benders excel at moving. So that's sort of how 
breaks down between the elements. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and the token type, the token type matters for the purpose of making attacks because you're not allowed to put a token in a space that you already have the same kind of token in. And so what that ends up doing is it makes it so your team has to coordinate to get really strong attacks on specific targets on the opposing side of the team. Um, yeah, but and that's the, the full extent to, to which the elements matter. And then occasionally you get abilities like the um, the fire ferrets counterband, which looks specifically for an element and then punishes your opponent for using it. Yeah, there, there's tricks that are actually elementally keyed. So once we add the elemental stuff, sorry, the trick stuff, then some of that comes into play as well. So uh, Twitch username one one two one, that's a funny name, um, is asking about what does the advanced game look like based on this. So it's marginally different in that every turn when you play a elemental card from a vendor, if you also have a trick attached to that vendor, you have the choice of activating that trick. And those tricks do really funky things that really either accelerate the game or break a rule in the game. So uh, they do add a lot more to the game once you get it in. But the flow of the game is exactly the same in how Matt and Ed are playing it in terms of getting focused, you know, playing hard, checking hits, and, you know, staying sharp. So while um, Sen was answering questions for our audience, remember, you know, if you guys are in Twitch, this is live. We're reading your chat. We see what you're writing to us, and we're going to do the best of our ability to answer any questions that you have. So make sure you bring, you know, keep the questions, comments, criticism of Matt, comments. <laughs> Uh, what I did was I purchased a, a spiral flare clip, spiral flare kick. What's this card here? Uh, for three chi, which brought my chi back down to zero, uh, I had to pull. I, my main deck was empty, so I shuffled in uh, my discard pile and I discarded another one of my Earthbender token uh, cards, and I drew two new cards. So I'm back up to three, and Matt's ready to go. So I'm going to play River's Edge here, so I'm going to move one space. I should move. And Just then there. I'm going to attack two range three with Pierce. So then I'm going to attack over here, uh, and that's going to be the end of that. Then I have a uh, headshot. So I'm actually going to use that on my own guy again. Uh, so it's range two, attack three, so I'm going to use that to clear out your tokens here, and then I put one as well. Uh, I'm not going to use my day's ability on myself. And then finally, I've got Radiant Heat here, so I'm going to attempt to move, but I can't because your hold token. So that goes away. And then I'm going to attack one, range two, and then attack one, range two. So I'm going to attack here, and then here. Okay. And then that's going to be the end of my turn, so <sighs> everything gets shuffled back together. And uh, not gonna buy anything, so I'm going to place a new card on top. <coughs> so what happens if all of your cards are revealed at the end? Do you keep putting new ones on top, or? Sorry, I was distracted reading chat. Can you ask your question again? It happens. Uh, if you all of your cards uh, from your decks are revealed and it comes to the end of your turn, what happens? Do you just put another one on top of the pile, or? Uh, so if all of your strategy cards are revealed, then you're sort of in like the final stages of the game. So if you would go to flip a card on one of your strategy decks and there's no cards left to flip, you take the referee die and you give it a roll. And if it comes up a yellow fan, game match ends because it's reached the time limit, and you immediately see who's won. So we're, we're getting to the end there, especially with one of your decks being missing now. So That's right. Thanks, Matt. Just point it out, you know. So I'm in the unfortunate position where all of my attacks... Are Pierce. Are Pierce. I'm going to discard... I don't want to, but I'm going to discard my Spiral Flare Kick. So you're going to get a cheat from that. And you got to cheat at the beginning of your turn as well. Don't yes. forget that. Sorry. Uh, so I am at cheat too. Uh, somebody was asking about the specials deck, whether we were still flipping cards. Yes. Well, I'm still flipping cards. That's cheating. 
I am doing no such thing. I'm going to start off with Liquid Lash. Liquid Lash. That's going to be block one. Your stupid card. Uh, attack two, pierce two. Attack two. Uh, attack two, two range, range two, two with pierce and hold. Okay, so those two are going to... Mm, but Oh, but it's pierce, yeah. So, and then I get held. So then next up you have... <coughs> oh, boy. Uh, Firestorm. Jeez. Yay. She's annihilating you again? Yeah. It didn't work last time. It didn't work last time, which made me really, I have really a feeling upset. that this time is going to be different. Okay. Three. So it's three range four. Two range four. One range four. One range four. And then you get to use your ability of... I finally get to use my counterbend! Oh, I'm so excited now! Aren't you excited for me? So what does that do again? Remind me. Wait! Of. Why? Because I am taking back my chi and I'm using Spiral Flare Kick. No, you can't do oh, that. Oh, I totally can and I just did. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay, I'm okay with this. Oh, I'm so happy with this. Now you're thinking with elemental bending. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> I'm gonna need some of your tokens. Why? What? Because I've run out of my own. I see three of them right there. Not enough. I need four. Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, use well, use your white tokens. Instead. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So I have to finish up this one. All right. Uh, so I've laid out all of my tokens. Here's my grouping of three. Move, move the card. Here's my grouping of three. I need to still see the card, but I just didn't want it to be in the way of my finger, which is very important. My grouping of three, my grouping of two, my grouping of one, and I have another one over here. I get to use counter bend now. So first target in a space with your opponent's tokens, matching the active bender's element and flip them to your side. So here's Matt's attempt at attacking me. Now it's mine. Uh, then you may move the stack one adjacent space from its original position following spread and token annihilation rules. Well, I already have something over here. And I have a water attack over here. This square isn't... Okay. None, so I'm going to... I can't stack them. Because if you weren't going to move, I would have put it there. Okay. Right, so that's good. And now I'm going to use Spiral Flare Kick. I'm just going to light the whole world on fire. This is so good. I'm so happy with this. So you're going to attack two range three <coughs> with Pierce. I can't stack them. Right, yeah. Man, this is really becoming a problem. I just have so many attacks on the board. Let's see if you could actually push me back with it for once. <laughs> not. <laughs> okay. But I can stack it here because it's the different elements. Correct. Attack. So then you're going to move, yeah. and then you're going to attack two range three. Yeah, and because one... And I could put those here. You sure can. And you're on hold, so you can't want We ran out of cubes, so the white ones represent fire now as well. Because we are lighting everything it's on fire. too much fire. It can't, so, is that so a there's a little confusion around Pierce going on in the chat, and um, I'm just going to take a second to go over it again. Sure. Um, so uh, Pierce, uh, there's some questions about whether or not Pierce tokens will be different, and there's no reason for them to be different because Pierce only affects how tokens are placed. Normally when you're placing tokens, if there's opposing tokens in the same spot, they counter each other out one to one. But when you drop Pierce tokens, there's no token annihilation. So you can see uh, Xiao Zhu over there um, has got a big pile of Ant's tokens on him. And there's one of Matt's little water tokens in that space. And now under normal bending rules, if Ant had abused regular attacks, that token would have countered one of the incoming attacks. But Ant has been clever and has used nothing but Pierce to attack that space. And so that little token is still there, having not annihilated anything. Hopefully that makes sense for everybody. I'm really happy that you preemptively used your token as defense. Um, oh, now in this part, I remove all of my yeah. opponent's tokens there from the board. So. Yes? I know there's a number of tokens in the game. Is that limit to how many tokens you put on the board? As you can see, you can do more than that. Don't bring that question up <laughs> at a different point in time, Joshua. Not now! <laughs> So yeah, I'm, you're not you're not limited by the tokens in the box. If you okay. somehow manage to find a way to go over the token supply in the box, awesome job! Find some other tokens <laughs> and like celebrate your accomplishment. Light the board on fire. 
Yeah, so I'm going to die miserably right now. So, uh, for those of you just joining us, we're kind of halfway through. I want to let you through, yeah. know that Seth and Jesse are here in chat with us live. They are the designers for the game Legend of Korra uh, Pro Bending Arena. So if you have any questions, please make sure that you're asking them in chat. And I'm sure I've just volunteered Seth and Jesse to answer all your questions. So I'm going to play Radiant Heat. I can move, but I can't because your hold token, so I get rid of that. Then I'm going to attack one range two, so I'm going to use that to annihilate this one over here. Uh, then I'm going to attack one range two again, so I'm going to place that uh, You're over gonna move into that here. Spot, aren't you? No, I'm going to die. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> uh, so then I'm going to play River's Edge here, so I'm going to move. Move over here. Okay, I'm guy. going to just just wait. I'm going to uh, attack two range three. So I'm going to put those over here, uh, and then I'm going to play flash flood. So then I'm going to move. I'm going to attack two range three. Then I'm going to flood that over here and over here. Then I'm going to move again over here. Um, that's the end of all I can play right now. <laughs> so resolving back from row C here in the back, uh, my Earthbender gets completely blasted into next Tuesday. Uh, oh, wow. Then my Firebender here in row A gets blasted off the board as well. So I lost two of my uh, benders this round. You didn't want to count how many attacks? No, it's fine. Let's get six, G. So I gain six chi. So I'm up to eight, my max. Uh, I remove these two decks from the game there. Uh, then I'm going to, oh boy, I'm going to buy some stuff. So I'm gonna buy Frozen Floor. So that's going on the top of my deck. So you can look forward to that. <laughs> uh, so that's five, so I'm down to three. I can't buy anything else, so that's gonna be the end of my turn, Matt. so. Yes. Twitch username 1121 wants to know what the white cubes were. Oh, because she ran out of fire cubes, so that's the, uh, that's the end of that. So I'm going to now draw my three cards. One, two, three. And uh, I'm, I'm ready for the next round, Am. Oh, oh boy. This is so good. <laughs> 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 All right, so my Uchi is going up from one to two. Uh, I have my hand here, my three cards. Uh, I am going to... <laughs> the waterbender's back must hurt from the carry he's pulling right now for his team. <laughs> uh, my favorite character is Tom, so earthbending is, is my thing. Yeah. She's I, great. I'm a firebender, I've had to accept that. So are you Zuko? Toph sounds like Toph. Or Lord Iroh. Uh, oh, bad no, I'm more, I'm more of a Zuko. I'm, I'm going through and I have like all this, all I see is Iroh with T. You're a Zula. I can do that. I'm alright with that. Okay. Oh, a Zula. I'm okay with that. Can I be the cabbage man? <laughs> My cabbages! <laughs> I am going to... <coughs> Okay, I need to do stuff and things. I need to... Did you up your chi by one? Yes, I did. Okay. I was hoping you'd forget. <laughs> I'm going to start off with Flash Flare. Flash Flare. So attack one, range one. Oh, that goes away. Move. Yeah. And attack one, range one. Yeah, oh, boy. Okay. Then you have... High Tide. High Tide. You're going to move. And then attack one, range... Or attack two, range one. And then finally you have... Are you not, you could... What was my range on one. one? Okay, I need to put that here. Okay. So then you're gonna do Serpent Blade, <coughs> so that's attack three, range three. And then it's gonna put two next to it. And then two next to that. Look at all of that water everywhere. Water, water everywhere, I'm not to drink. Yay. So you could you could have that. There you go. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. This is gonna be a very bad turn for me. It's exciting. Bolins are here. Uh, yeah, that's you're you're fine. You're fine. Okay, so that's the end of your turn there. And look, nothing hit you, so you're good. 
want to make sure everybody can see him yeah, sharing he's, now. he's good. You're good. Oh, these are mine. <laughs> you could have him probably going to use them more than I am, so uh, beginning of my turn now, or you flip over one of your cards. Yes, uh, I have two chi, so I'm going to purchase Fire Trap. That's going to go on the top of my deck, and I'm going to flip over my special deck. That will reveal Solar Burst. All right, so it's my turn of my chi by one. Uh, I'm going to discard two cards because I can't use them. You get two chi now. So I get two chi. It's good. Uh, then I'm going to play Frozen Floor. <coughs> so, first I need a, uh, a yellow flag. Need a so, yellow no. fan wrap. That's a that's a prototype uh, typo there. That icon will be on the bottom of the card. Ah, okay. Which is important because if that causes you to get ejected from the game, you still get the effect of your having cheated your pants off anyway. <laughs> All right. So I am going to uh, attack three, range three. So I'll put that over here and then i'm going to daze you so you may choose one bender in the space targeted they get a daze token so please put a black token on your character there and what does daze do it's going to ignore the first ability or attack in your action bar okay. for the card that you play yeah and actually that that token you should put it on your player board when it says put it on the character it means put it on your player board not on the main board okay. and that's important because that means it's not going to go away at the end of your turn it's going to sit there until you shake it off Ah, okay. Uh, then I'm going to attack three, range three, and then they're stunned as well. Jesse, Jesse did you literally just Taylor Swift the show? <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish. Shake, shake, shake. Up. Oh, oh. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to attack three, range three over here as well. And then I need my yellow. Okay, so, so you want to explain to chat how this works? So uh, we do interactivity here. So we've got a ref die. So if you do exclamation mark ref... Whoever rolls that first, whoever does that command first, is actually going to roll the ref die for us here. And you got a blank. So I'm good. I didn't get a penalty. I'm okay. But um, now I have to check for hits, and I got hit twice. So that's going to knock me back into the back row. So good. So... Wait a second. Don't I get to immediately advance? Oh, shoot. I played that wrong. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and, and you got to take your turns back, so I'm gonna take my turns back. I'm gonna take my turns back, so I'm I'm gonna play those oh, back so, here. It's so good, though. I'm gonna play those all back oh, here. That's so good. <laughs> it's okay, Matt, because the first thing you do when you execute a line advance is, is you remove all the yeah. You wipe the you wipe the board. That's right. <laughs> Darn it. Right now, Anne. Yeah. Enter the empty space. Move your vendors up as far as you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, like she's like swaggering up there. <laughs> Do I get to choose any yes. space? Yes, any space is fine. So I've got a question for you guys. Uh, can you right have now. multiple <laughs> stun icons on one character? Multiple days? Yes, multiple days. <laughs> no, you're just days. Okay. Uh, but the, the good news, Matt, it's not it's not all bad news for you. When you suffer a line advance, you're going to take a bonus turn. So you're, when you finish this turn, take another turn. Okay. So you get to set the tempo of the of the next. Party. So first, I'm going to buy a card here. So I'm gonna buy Jawbreaker. Put that. On the top. Both of them? I cannot buy both of them. I am one chi short. Uh, so then I don't have any more cards to flip over right now at the end of my first turn. So what happens here? Uh, roll the referee die. So we need to roll a exclamation mark ref. So what am I hoping for here? That's the question. Blank. It's blank. <sighs> okay. So if it Please, wasn't take if, another turn. if it wasn't blank, would the game end immediately right there? Yes, it would end immediately. So, I mean, it could end immediately, like, you know, the next time as well. But So I'm going to discard one card to begin with, because I don't have to cheat for it. Uh, then I'm going to play Jawbreaker. So I'm going to move a spot, and then I'm going to attack one range two. So I'll put that here, and then you get two hold tokens then I'm going to do headshot 
So it's going to be attack three, range two. So I'll put that here, and then you get a stun token, but you already got a stun token. I mean, a daze token. Right. And then that's the end of my uh, turn. I don't have any more cards left. I will buy Flash Flood, put that on top, but I don't have any more cards to flip over, so I need another Ref Die to be rolled. Or does the Ref Die get... Does the Ref Die no. get rolled for the bonus turn as well? Yes. Okay. But Matt, before you do that, <coughs> I just wondered, like, because Core's already dazed, did you want to daze Mako instead? Because you, you could, I mean... They actually oh, both have dazed tokens. Oh, okay. Then you're fine. You're good. Okay. Don't... Come on. Blank. 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 Oh. No! Oh. <laughs> uh. So, fan was rolled, which means that the referees have called the match at time. Matt, because... Um, well, Ed has pushed really far into his territory. Matt loses the game. So, for all y'all who uh, bet on the wolf bats, sorry to say you just lost all your credits. You should probably watch The Legend of Korra and see how this actual battle plays out. Don't the wolf bats win the first time? This is not... Wolf the... bats actually win the championship. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah. <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a lot less trash talking from my winner seat. <laughs> so what if I draw only earth and fire? I would have to just discard them and get the chi, and I'd be kind of dead in the water. Yeah. I, I'm I'm a little upset. That's that's sad. Can we go back to this the board camp? This looks so good. Wait, now does it look better? <laughs> does it look better for you there now? It does. Okay. Uh, so what's the time like, Josh? Um, it is nine forty. Up to you guys if you want to do another round or. Do you think we could do another quick round or? You want to make sure we get our review in. I want to make sure I get our review in. Okay. So that was our playthrough of uh, Legend of Korra Pro Bending Arena. Super duper fun. Um, we're going to be doing a review section where we like to talk about uh, what our favorite parts of the game were, what we necessarily didn't care for, and uh, what we would do uh, to change it up in our personal opinion uh, if we had the opportunity. Um, you guys want to show off some of the tricks and stuff and talk with? Yeah, let's, let's show off some of the other stuff in the game that we didn't get a chance to get to. Uh, for example, some of the tricks here, and then Anne, ask away any questions that you have as well. Sure. Uh, so I had an absolutely great time playing this game, Jesse and Zen. Thank you so much for bringing this to life. I really, really appreciate it, uh, mostly because I won. And uh, can you tell me what was one thing maybe that you guys were surprised by or really interested in while you were developing the game? Jesse. They're waiting for each other yeah. to go again. It's really we're, cute. Yeah, we're being delayed again. <laughs> uh, my dog's my dog is barking. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm <clears throat> there's a bunch of activity behind me as well. So, could you just quickly repeat the question? No I'm sorry. worries. I'm very sorry. Was there something very uh, interesting sorry. or something that surprised you when you guys were working on the development of this game? Um. Uh. So. In terms of the, the mechanics themselves, or how it came together, you're just asking me to tell you about when I was surprised. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I was surprised that one time that Sen beat me, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Shots what, uh, what surprised me was uh, when, when we when we started using the sort of soft deck building system that you guys were playing, that, that, that the game has, where you start with a simple deck and then you slowly buy in these more powerful cards, um, I was really impressed at how well it ramps up the game uh, and how many cinematic moments it creates. Like even the finisher right there that you guys had, um, it was pretty exciting. Like that last second, there's this huge attack and Matt got knocked all the way back off the end. Um, and if the referee die hadn't have gone, against Matt, I mean, who knows, maybe you wouldn't have had the tools to respond. If Matt had a couple of turns, he might have been able to start gaining ground back on you. And so the possibility in the game for there to be uh, these nice, like, back and forth flow, the high action moves, um, they, they, they kind of organically came out of the design process. And it was just, we were sitting there play testing one day, and it was like, holy crap, this is pro bending. <laughs> this is a real so, thing. This is working. No, I think it's really cool. Uh, related to the Kickstarter, you guys have already funded, you have funded four times over, absolutely phenomenal. 
Is there any uh, stretch goals or expansions that you want to see get unlocked during the Kickstarter process? Oh, there was faces. Well, it's interesting because this is one of those unique cases where everything is already unlocked. Okay. Uh, so you buy into this, you're getting everything, um, except for one thing which will come up uh, soon, I hope. And that is going to come out the next couple of days. Um, so yeah, it's a weird kind of Kickstarter in that way that there aren't stretch goals. Okay. Everything just sort of gets revealed over time. Ooh. Everything gets revealed over time. So, so there's lots of surprises in store? Yeah, and a lot of people are already guessing, uh, you know, who the next characters are going to be that are revealed. They know that some of them are definitely teams of vendors. And today was the first reveal of a solo vendor. So um, solo vendors were kind of interesting. We, uh, we kind of wanted to change it up from just bending teams against another bending team. A lot of the characters, the really memorable ones in the show, are like ridiculously powerful. And so today we <clears throat> revealed Kali, who is the combustion bender, the the woman with the dots on her forehead that oh, blows yeah. things up with her mind. Yeah. So she's revealed today, and so there's a whole new mechanic on how she works with combustion, which is super interesting. And then. We're going to reveal more and more people and teams that have different abilities and awesome. different ways to interact with the rule system that you guys have played. So uh, each team has its own unique deck, of course, but also its own unique power. So just like the wolf bats have days and the fire ferrets have counter men, the different teams all have different abilities. So Jesse, the, your favorite team is the Rappers, right? Yeah, Rabaroos are my favorite team. Why, Jesse? Why? Because Rabaroos do the thing that I like to do the most in card games, which is draw cards and play more of them. Um, so. so so, that's it. That actually sounds like right <laughs> at my place. I mean, there's too. not much more to say. But you just, you know, they have this cool thing where you, uh, you spend some time building up some secondary resources, these rally tokens, and then when you drop your blitz icons, it lets you spend two rally tokens to draw and play the top card of your deck. Okay. And so you build up a little bit, and then you just start like throwing okay. attacks at your, you take, you can get to the point where you can take like a, a turn that is equivalent to a turn and a half. Oh, that's awesome. So, that's kind that's of really how fun. I felt with some of the special moves when I was laying out like a whole row of attacks. Oh yeah, your special move was ridiculous. <laughs> was crazy. Uh, have you had any uh, Kickstarter backers guess anything really interesting or, you know, trying to avoid the line of spoilery, but anything that you found amusing or, or interesting that was guessed about the campaign? S uh, you're you're, my, you're muted again, the again there, so. About the campaign I'm going in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> so there are, uh, there's a lot of stuff that people guessed that was either really interesting or really so close. Um, and so people, there's a lot of people who are really deep in the lore, like deep in the lore. And I consider myself a real fan of the show, but these people are calling out things like, well, she normally stands on the right hand board. It's like, wait a minute, <laughs> I think they're right. <laughs> that's, that's pretty observant, pretty yeah. observant. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple of characters that people have all already guessed. Okay. <laughs> and then some that I don't know they have an idea yet, so. I'm nice hoping surprise. that when they see the, the really the really cool reveal, the one that I'm waiting for the most, uh, that their minds kind of go, whoa, that's pretty cool. I'm very excited. I can't say it. I can't say yeah. it. You want to, though. To, you want to. He's, I do. We're, he's going to put his... We're trying to lay the bait out there to see how much we could draw you out into that. I'm going gonna, gonna to do what I normally do, and I'm going to talk with the mute. <laughs> <laughs> Who can read lips in chat? Sam, why don't you get muted and <laughs> stay there? <laughs> Uh, so I've got some of these uh, cards as well that we didn't get a chance to play with. Uh, they have the special abilities. These are for these are the trick cards uh, for when you get a little bit further in the game. Uh, so we've got here the the gripping stone. So that's one of the uh, earthbender ones. So it is it's got the yellow fan on it. So you do have to roll a ref die for this one. And it's put one hold token in any space. So it's just like a, kind of trip up the opponent, hold them down there that's for a cool. second. Um, then we've got one here, uh, adrenaline surge. 
So this is if your firebender is isolated, amplify <coughs> four. So amplify is an ability where if there is an elemental token in a space that corresponds to your bender, uh, you get to add that many more to it. So Ooh. you get to add four additional ones to that space. What does that, uh, the red circle with the X through it mean? That means that that card is once per game. So once you use it, it's removed from the game. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty biggie there. Uh, Twitch username is asking if these are trick cards that are currently being shown. Yes, these are the, the trick cards. So then like another one here is Endless Flames. That's Amplify 1 and Amplify 1. So you get to amplify two different spots by an additional one. Um, then we have here Determination. Your Earthbender cannot be knocked back this round. Elemental tokens in the Earthbender space are removed when are not removed when checking for hits this round. I so, could use that at the beginning of this game. I could have used that for when you overwhelm me with that. Jeez. Uh, but it's it's got a bunch of really cool cards like that. Um, here, like this one. If your Waterbender is not isolated, so put one whole token in two different spots. So hold on, people. Additionally. Uh, do you have some of yours there that you want to, you can show off in the chat? Sure, I was having fun green screening my eye. I'm like a child, I'm sorry. That's the ADD kicking in. Uh, so these are all actually the same cards then. Uh, I see you will say. find that there is a duplicate set of all the tricks so that both players have access to all of the same tricks if you're playing out of the box. Gotcha. You want to make sure that the, it, it is a complete two-player game in the box. So then, like, another interesting one here, uh, weave through the air, move your water bender one space, ignoring hold tokens, then deflect one elemental token. That's good. So deflect one, that's another ability here. So deflect is move up to the number, so one elemental token from the airbender space into an adjacent space, uh, ignoring spread and annihilation rule. So you kind of bump it into an additional space. It's still there, but move it out of your way. So these are the tricks that get added in with the advanced rules, as well as your ability to start your benders in varying spaces along zone A, that's the front row, and as well as kind of choosing which cards to put in your, uh, your starting decks there when you build it up, as opposed to just the standard set of cards. I have an ADD question. You, uh, you, you guys didn't show my favorite trick in the core box. Okay. So oh. I'm, just, I'm just, let's see oh, if I can. Oh, he's got it. I got it. Gravel he wanted blast. to make sure it was shown. Oh, here, I, I got it here, too. Gra <laughs> Gravel Blast. If your water and earthbender are in the same space, put one water and one earth token in any one space on the board, then daze one bender in that space. That's really cool. That is... Didn't th that was in one of the fights. You saw it more... It totally than was. Than That's awesome. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean you've seen this? <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, really? Headlines. Right from the headlines. <laughs> this is my own. Breaking news. Da, 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 da. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's talking about painted minis. Yeah. I haven't seen any of them. Because, and I, I haven't, haven't had a chance to. Are, are the Cora minis already out and being painted? Said? Um, so the pre production ones have been painted professionally and so those have been shown um i sent a link to the feed but i don't think it came out uh anyways uh those have been shown um only the two core teams have been painted though so far and not by us that would that'd be a bad idea <laughs> also we don't have them so when we do our playthrough we're not going to be using them oh uh, i should explain our playthrough is going to be on a much less cool system than what you guys have um, also it's going to be using the other advanced rules, which are going to be fantasy team drafts. So Jesse will be playing with a team that he's made up, and I'll be playing with a team that I've made up of the vendors that are in the system already. Okay. I believe Jesse is going to be using a. Uh, I'm using a team. I'm using a, a mix that hasn't been revealed yet, and so uh -huh. our showdown's going to go up after after oh, yeah. all the required material has been revealed by the kickstarter we almost got a spoiler so close so close oh so we're looking at some of the minis now and those are oh, the painted ones and that's gorgeous. really cool. josh put the link up for the minis in chat that's really cool thanks josh can you tell me a little bit about the artist that painted those minis you know what i actually can't i think ross uh ross our our marketing director at idw got it done by uh the pro picture down there actually I think Cage knows who it is. 
It's insane. Yeah, they, they are really cool. Yeah, they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, deflect knocks an elemental space next round, next to you or across. So it's an adjacent space. It deflects over to, from what I see here. Uh, yeah, an adjacent space. So any space that shares an edge or a corner for right. deflect. All right. Well, I think the pager's name is Jetta. I think you're right, Cage. Oh, and uh, Days. Just so people uh, know, Days. If you, I don't know if you guys can put up another. Just any any card that you have. Any of the action cards. Oh. Any of the. Yeah. Yeah. So if this would never happen because Tano's one of Days people, but Here. let's say. Uh, let's. Let me. There you go. No. Oh yeah. So let's say Cora got Days. When she plays this card high tide, she could not use the movement icon, but she would then get the next icon below that. So it wipes out the first icon row for if your days, that clears your days. It's like shaking your head, saying, I guess I can't move, but I'm going to shake it off. Ha ha ha, Jesse. And then I get to attack after Shake. Shake. <laughs> <laughs> shake it off. Shake it off. And it's not limited to movement, it's just whatever your first action is in the flow, right? That's yeah, right. so if, if you pull the card off and show the one below it, if Tano was dazed and he played this card, it would do nothing except remove the dazed token from it. Yeah. I hope that Shake It Off bit gets clipped so that we can share it with our followers forever. <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, guys, is there anything else that you would like to make sure our audience knows? Uh, do you have a date for your playthrough or where they can catch you online? I don't know if it's going to actually be live. I think it's actually just probably going to record it and then release it as an update. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah, but if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're following the Kickstarter, then you won't miss it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if you like the game today, please do follow the Kickstarter. If you feel like backing it, awesome. Uh, one thing I will say that if you are a true Avatar fan or a Korra fan and want to see more than what's in this game, if you support the Kickstarter, there's going to be a bigger chance of that ever happening. Nickelodeon would love to see this do well, and if it does, then they'll say, oh yeah, let's let that happen more, right? So We know there's a market yeah, for it. We know there's a demand for it. The yeah. first game did so well. We're definitely going to you know, green light another project with Sen and Jesse behind it. Yeah, maybe. That'd be great. <laughs> we'll campaign for you guys. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, and, and yes, at the, the cage range, maybe I, I will wear some funky clothes to, to uh, fight Jesse in. I don't know what though. Not saran wrap. I see. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I saw plastic wrap being suggested and I was very confused. You could do bubble wrap and do like the Zoltan suits. <laughs> Yeah, that would be better. <laughs> there's, there's a little more uh, deflection of light with uh, the bubbles. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so is there anything else you guys want to make sure you talk about uh, before we get into our review section of this? No. Not for me. No, how about it? All right, perfect. So we're going to say goodbye to you two just because we have a problem with saying our reviews to people's faces. Well, Anne has a problem with saying her review to people's faces. She gets a little embarrassed. But we had an absolutely great time playing the game and having you guys on stream. You are super awesome. This flowed really well. You're really cool people. And I, again, thank you so much for taking the time uh, out of your evening to come hang out with us and our audience no and chat. We really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. All right, so thank you guys for joining us. And everyone in chat, please stay tuned. We're going to do a soft sign-off in just a second here uh, so we can compartmentalize these videos, but we will be back in just a second with our review section where we talk about what we liked about the game, or any criticisms we have, and then uh, what we would tweak if we had the opportunity to. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We would like to point out that this stream and all of this week's streams are sponsored by the Legend of Korra Pro Bending Arena. Super excited about that. Thank you, guys. Uh, Twist Gaming, soft signing off for now. See you in just a second. <laughs>